You ever watch a big award show like the Academy Awards? You know, the Oscars or the Grammys or something like that? And when a winner is announced for whatever category, sometimes the winner will get up to, to the podium or to the microphone and they'll have a speech prepared. And they'll have a piece of paper in their hand of their speech and they'll look at it and then they'll kind of look up at the crowd and look at it again, look up at the crowd and then they'll just crumple it up and throw it away and they'll say something along the lines of, you know, I had this big ass speech prepared that I was gonna say to you guys if I won, but now that I'm up here and I'm in this moment, I'd rather just speak from the heart. Well, that's how I feel right now. I got this big whiteboard prepared that I did. I'm gonna talk about the benefits of including isometric pauses in your muscle building strategy. But sometimes when I do these boards, I feel like they're very limiting because it's almost like I have to stick to a script and I feel better freestyling. So, you know, like those people in the Academy Awards, me and the board, we're gonna part on this one. I got this one on my own. I'm gonna speak from the heart. Reminds me of a, an Usher song called Burn. And he says, it's gonna burn for me to say this, but it's coming from the heart. It's been a long time coming, but we done been fell apart. I know you wanna work this out, but I don't think you're gonna change. I do, but you don't. I think it's best we go our separate ways. So. With that being said, fuck the board. I'm not gonna use it. I'll talk to you about the benefits of using isometric pauses in your muscle building strategy. So at the end of this, you can decide whether or not you want to include them. I'll give you some examples of how to practically apply this information so that you can start to maximize your return on investment of time and effort in the gym if you want to build muscle. So the first thing you need to know is that anytime you try to lift a weight, there's only going to be one of two different outcomes. The weight's either going to move or it's not. Now, whether the weight moves or not does not mean that force was produced or not. It just means that either enough force was produced or not. And whether the weight moves or not, there's only two types of intention when you're training. The intention to overcome and the intention to yield. So I'll give you two examples to illustrate the point. If you had a bar on your back and you're doing squats and you're in a power rack and you set the pins at a certain height and you squat up into the pins, it doesn't even matter if there's any weight on the bar, you hit the pins and you can't keep going, but you're trying to push through them. What you would see if you watch someone do this is no movement occurring, but it doesn't mean that they're not producing force. Their intention is to overcome, to promote a shortening of the muscles involved in the movement and to attempt to promote movement. Now, if you took the same exercise of squat and you loaded it up with a bunch of weight and you descended into the squat, maybe an eighth of the range or a quarter of the range, and you stopped right there, once again, an onlooker would see you and say, there's no movement occurring. So the external result is that there's no movement, but internally you're producing force to prevent the bar from crushing you. So your intention is to yield the weight. So there's only two types of intention, to overcome or to yield. Now you can use isometrics to promote a bunch of different responses, but there's two primary responses that you would use them for. You would use them to promote a neurological response, turn on your nervous system and potentiate performance, or to promote a metabolic response. And the response that you wish to promote should dictate how long you hold the isometric contraction for. You wanna promote a neural response to potentiate performance? You're gonna to wanna to hold position for you know, up to 10 seconds. One to six seconds is ideal. After 10 seconds of max effort, the fast twitch fibers will begin to fatigue anyways. You wanna promote a metabolic response, you're gonna to wanna to hold a position for 20 to 60 seconds. If you can't hold a position and keep the muscles engaged for at least 20 seconds, you're not gonna promote much of a metabolic response. And if you can hold it for more than 60 seconds, then 
I'd argue that the weight's just too light to impose enough of a demand to promote a growth response in the first place. Now, there's a lot of benefits that isometric contractions offer that static contractions, or rather dynamic contractions, do not offer. The first one we'll talk about is maximal tension duration. Now, when you perform a repetition through a full range, the amount of weight that you're able to use is limited by how strong you are in the weakest position of the movement. Therefore, the muscles are only under maximal tension when you enter that weakest range, meaning that they're only under maximal tension for roughly a quarter to half of a second during a repetition. So it would take 10 repetitions to accumulate two and a half to five seconds of maximal tension. With an isometric, you can exert force maximally for up to 10 seconds. So you can keep the muscles under maximal tension for significantly longer. And that's just one effort. If you did that six times, that's one minute of maximal tension. Now, while that does sound good, the law of specificity would suggest that strength is gained in the range that it's trained. So if you don't train through a full range of motion, you won't get strong through a full range of motion. If you did isometrics exclusively, you only get strong at the joint angle that you train. So you can account for this by performing isometrics with your muscles in their longest position, in their shortest position, and in their mid-range, and promote a very similar effect. Another factor to consider would be the rate of return on investment. With dynamic repetitions, you get what you put in. You put in a full range, you reap the benefits of doing so. With isometrics, depending on what you use them for, you can actually get a greater rate of return on investment. So if you're using them to promote a neurological response, to turn on your nervous system and potentiate performance, there's not a lot of demand on the muscles. You're not going to damage them. So using them in this manner is not going to negatively impact performance. It's not going to hinder subsequent performance, but rather enhance it. So you can get a greater rate of return. Another factor to consider between the two is the motor skill required to perform the effort. The more movement that is involved the greater motor skill requirement there's going to be. With isometrics, there's no movement occurring. Therefore, there's a very low motor skill required to do them effectively. Therefore, they're very good for beginners. And finally, stability is a prerequisite to force production. The more stable you are, the more force you can produce. How much force can you produce when standing on ice. Not much because you're not stable. So with isometrics, since you're completely stable and you're not moving, you could produce maximum force. This can facilitate growth both directly by way of keeping the muscles under tension, maximal tension, or indirectly because the more force you produce is indicative that you've recruited more muscle fibers. The more muscle fibers you recruit, the greater your capacity to recruit them will become. The better you get at recruiting muscle fibers at will, the more you can fatigue them at will. And the more that you recruit and fatigue without overworking your body's capacity to recover, the greater response you're going to get from a muscle building perspective. <clears throat> so isometrics can be used to promote growth directly and indirectly. So how can we practically apply this information? How can we directly promote growth through the use of isometrics? Well, now that you understand 
the underlying reason for incorporating them, which is to increase the time under maximal tension, you can use it how you want to. You can do isometrics on their own as a standalone. You could do sets of 20 to 60 seconds. You could use them to post exhaust the muscle. So you do your traditional dynamic set at the end of the set. You just hold a certain body position or posture to extend the time under maximal tension. And you aim for 20 seconds. If you can get to 20 seconds after performing a full set, good for you. You can get to 60, holy fuck. You can use them to pre-exhaust the muscle. So you can hold a certain body position or posture where you would like to keep the muscles under high levels of tension for a certain period of time and then continue with your traditional dynamic set, performing your repetitions how you normally would. Now in that case, because the purpose is to keep the muscles under high levels of tension at a very specific range, you're going to need two different weights because you're going to want to use a heavier one to pre-exhaust the muscle and then after the muscles are exhausted, you're not going to be able to perform any reps. So you'd ideally pick a weight that you could lift like three to five times. If you did three to five reps, you probably keep the muscles under tension for 10 to 20 seconds. So what you would do is you pick a three to five rep max, hold a certain body position or posture, and try to keep the muscles under tension for two to three times the amount of time they normally would be under tension when performing a traditional set. Just try to hold the position for 45 to 60 seconds. After that time has passed, the muscles are gonna be exhausted to some degree. We can't expect you to perform any repetitions so you drop down to a weight that you can normally lift 15 to 20 times. And because you're exhausted in that acute period, you just aim for half of that, 8 to 10. And if you really want to get silly, you can include a post-exhaust isometric after those repetitions. So you can kind of use them however you want to. It's really, you have the free will to include them how you want. You could, you know use them in ascending or descending fashion. So I'll give you a couple examples to help illustrate the point. On the first rep, you hold a certain body position for one second. Second rep, two seconds. Third rep, three seconds. You get the picture. Descending is the opposite. So if you want to do 10 reps, first rep you hold for 10 seconds. Second rep for nine. Third for eight. Fourth for seven. You get the picture. Doesn't have to be one second holds. You could go in increments of three, three, six, nine, 12, nine, six, three, however you want. Five, 10, 15, 20. Good luck with that. That's going to be really fucking challenging. But at the end of the day, when you understand the underlying reason for including them in the first place, include them how you want to based on how you feel. Your purpose for doing so is to keep the muscles under maximal tension at specific ranges that they otherwise wouldn't be under maximal tension for. And when you understand why you're doing that, you have the free will to use them however the fuck you want. So that's something I wanted to share. I had this whole whiteboard prepared. And you know what? I said, fuck it. We're not going to stick to the script. Throw the fucking script out. <clears throat> I got this shit, man. I don't need a script. You like this information, feel free to share it. Click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel, and I'll keep bringing you better information, presenting it in a way that you can practically apply it immediately to maximize your return on investment, time, and effort as it relates to building muscle and getting stronger.